I, I think you've both been uh, working around this question that I'm going to ask you just now, but uh, just for further clarifications, I'll ask it maybe a little different way. What steps is the USDA taking to work with outside stakeholders such as state departments of ag, animal health officials, wildlife experts, uh, to inform the public, especially those with backyard flocks, about biosecurity and resources on what symptoms to look for to help mitigate the spread of avian influenza? Uh, yeah, there's a, a lot of resources that um, APHIS has been putting into play, and Dr. Nagel can talk about some of them specifically. Um, I mentioned the Defend the, the Flock program. That's an important one. The partnerships that you identified but with states, with, with the industry, with Cooperative Extension, with other nonprofits and tribal organizations, uh, all of those different layers of, of partnerships are very important so that we're reaching different constituents who are getting information from different information sources. Uh, but I'll talk, pass it to Dr. Nagel. Yeah, thank you. It's really a whole of industry response with regard to outreach and education, right? Um, in addition to some of the things um, previously mentioned, we do provide cooperative agreement funding directly to states that are impacted by HPAI to assist with their response as well as education and outreach with those local producers. Okay. Uh I'll just add on, my daughter, uh, until we moved to D.C., uh, was a 4-H member, and we would get information through the 4-H network. So there's lots of different avenues and wonderful avenues to get that information. Okay, thank you. Undersecretary, is there an end in sight to the current uh, high path outbreak? And if, it, if the disease is here to stay, how does uh, that alter APHIS's approach to dealing with the disease moving forward? Uh, thank you so much for that question, Representative. That is an important question. One that I don't have an answer to. I wish I had a crystal ball to, to really know. But I think what is very important, and, and um, I can, I'll pass it to Dr. Nagel to talk about this because she so clearly identified it last week in a meeting uh, that we had with industry, is, is as we are working, um, just like we took lessons learned from the 2015 outbreak, we're already incorporating lessons learned in this 2022, 2023 outbreak. And that includes things like looking at and evaluating biosecurity and what more can we do on biosecurity because we know that is one, the one most effective thing in reducing lateral spread, uh, but also how we're looking at and reducing the attractiveness of wild birds because we know the virus load is very strong in, in the wild bird population and we want to reduce the in, introduction from wild birds. Thank you. Um, additionally, I'll add that um, we also really are working at the um, at the farm level to help do biosecurity assessments so producers can go through their facilities and identify if there's opportunity for wild birds to get in there and potentially infect their flocks. I think that's a really important next step for us. Um, I think you're leading toward the vaccination question. And um, so to that regard, um, we are currently behind the scenes having conversations with international trading partners. Dr. Sifford goes to um, the World Organization for Animal Health in May, and HPAI will be a major topic um, at that meeting. And she'll discuss with her counterparts across the world um, how we need, if we need to look at vaccination differently. Um, right now, our partners at Agricultural Research Service are investigating different strains of potential vaccine for possible licensure, and internally we are um, determining plans for how we might uh, implement a vaccine strategy. However, right now, today, we believe strongly that our response has been effective. Whenever we've identified HPAI in a case in domestic poultry, we've effectively stamped it out. And due to the great trade consequences of vaccine at this point, we're planning for the future but continuing on the current path. Thank you. Okay.